Today we are discussing about the covenant of wealth. How many covenants have we discussed about? First one? Uh, no, let me hear loud, especially from in front here, because I know you take notes. One, two, two, I can't hear you. Long life, not wrong, long life, okay. Three, eh? and the fourth one now, well, and next Sunday we'll deal with the covenant of health. I encourage you to bring anybody sick. Anybody that you know needs healing, bring them coming Sunday. God is not a man to lie. So as we talk about the covenant of wealth, you will understand that poverty will be past sentence. Lift your voice and say every covenant of poverty, lack and insufficiency. As I hear the word of God, if I inherited you from my fathers, I am dropping you in this service. In Jesus name. Kindly before we sit, let's read the word of God. Uh, I will request uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26. I will request that we have it broadcasted. Yeah, and let's read the word of God together. No gather into birth. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much more better than them. Amen. What a blessing. Exod uh, Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Let's read Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. Let's read the word of God loudly and more powerfully. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. You may have your seat in the presence of God. We said from the beginning that when we talk about covenant, we are talking about an agreement between two parties. And in this case, it is between us and God. God has his obligation in the covenant. And we also have our commitment to the covenant. Just like in a, a wedding union, that for two to be joined, there must be mutual agreement that we are forming a home and we come together and say vows. So God has already made commitments and as we read, he has said that while earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and winter and summer and um, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. It is a covenant that he made with Noah because he wanted to assure Noah that he's a covenant keeping God. After he destroyed the earth because of the sin of man, he made the covenant to declare that never again will he destroy the earth because of man. So God is not in the business of destruction. He's in the business of making and establishing covenants. So the issue is, are you willing to enter into that covenant with God? Because God is not, does not have favorites. In Genesis chapter 9 from verse 1, give me Genesis chapter 9 from verse 1. We read the word of God. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful. Now remove the name Noah and put your name. And God blessed Wamoyo and his sons and daughters and said to them, it is a divine requirement for you to be fruitful. It is a heavenly instruction for you to multiply. It is an expectation of the heavenly father that wherever you go, you replenish the earth. Therefore, according to the calendars of God, there is no poverty for you. There is no insufficiency for us. There is no inadequacies for us. There is no less than enough for us. God has given us everything that we need for us to be there. Give me verse 2. Verse 2. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Nyamo joru. Iti ge ho tako. Shionaga gea kanamwaki. Neko boriri. So God is also making a commitment that the fear of Noah or the fear of man shall be upon the animals of the field and animals of the earth and upon every fall of air all that moveth upon the and upon all the fishes of the sea in short god gave man dominion to make the animals obey him oh somebody say i take back my dominion give me verse three 
Verse 3 says, Every moving thing that liveth shall be made for you. I want to give you five, five things that God has committed to you to do in the covenant of well. Number one, God has given you a food guarantee as long as you live. But the issue is, are you fed or you are still struggling? Every moving thing that liveth shall be made for you. Even as a green herb have I given you all these things. God has given you and he will never take it. And forgive me those who are alive who say I talk to you, but sometimes emphasis is important. What I'm saying is that God does not eat amaranth. Amaranth is terere. It is glorified terere in English. God has given you all the green herbs. He has given you anything green that you desire for food. It means that God, when he created us, he had to make sure that the earth, the sea time, the harvest time, the, the summer and heat, all the seasons are in place. And all the animals are under us. And every living thing is edible by us. So there is a food guarantee. Tell your neighbor, you will never lack food. Uh -uh, I can't hear you. You will never lack food. That's why Jesus was asking, as we read in Matthew 6, 26, now look, the birds of the air, they eat without prayer. Even all the, the fowls of the air, they eat, they do not plant, they do not have a zest, your father feeds them. And God makes that promise as a father. And father means source of life. So as a father, he is committed to give you a full food security and food guarantee. As long as you are on earth, you will never die of hunger. Oh, that's why in Psalm 34 verse 10, he says that young lions may lack and suffer hunger, but they that wait upon the Lord, they that trust upon the Lord, they will never lack anything good. You are already in the covenant where everything good will be available for you to eat. I can't hear you. I therefore come against every power that is reacting against you. All food allergies, I cast them in this service. All food allergies, I cast them in the name of Jesus. All food allergies, we cast them in the name of Jesus. God gave us all the living things to eat and their opinion is irrelevant. Hey. I don't know whether you hear me. You can eat eggs because chicken was put under your domain. Only if you don't like it, but as long as you like it, all the living things, they were put under our, our care. Raka daboza, whatever you have been forbidden to eat, if you love it, go and eat. Every reaction that you have when you eat meat, I command you, go and eat meat. Whatever the doctor said you cannot eat, by the power of his covenant, go and eat in the name of Jesus. Why can't I hear an amen? A lady came here in this service. And she had never eaten banana in her life. That one I will always share wherever I go. Because that is one of those testimonies you hear. And I've never had like that one. So when you hear it too often, no, it excited me. And if it excites me, it means it shall be duplicated here. Because the devil can do some stupid things against you. If you tolerate him. But we refuse to tolerate the enemy. Oh, he is under your feet. Satan is under your feet. Allergies are under your feet. Diabetes is under your feet. High blood tension is under your feet. Every sugar or salt, whatever, we declare it is under our feet. We refuse all demonic allergies. Lift your voice and say, all demonic allergies associated with what I eat. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my body. In whose name? I've never had somebody, you may have your seat. She used to eat a, a fruit and a banana. When she eats banana, I think she has an allergic reaction. She cannot breathe and she has to be rushed to hospital. I don't know if there is a potassium or what is in the banana that was reacting with her. But then she came to a service. She was very new here. And uh, the, that time we decided for some reason when we are doing our tea, which we normally give every Sunday. Amen. And Mandazi. That day we decided to top up with a banana. We did not know that the banana was supposed to be a healing for somebody. That is why from time to time we cook here. Because food in the house of God is not like food in your house. Uh -uh. Don't be in a hurry when we cook food in church. Be there. Because you never know you may be eating your health. Hey. And so after she ate, she said, this one that is cooked in church, I am eating. That is provided for in church, I'm eating. She ate. And she waited for the reaction. The reaction never came. To this day, she eats bananas like nobody's business. 
I came to declare by the covenant of wealth that we have. Every power that has forbidden you to enjoy living things, we declare that power must let you go. Shout three powerful amen and have your seat. Take your seat in the presence of God. So God has given you a food guarantee. The second thing he has given you is that seed time and harvest is guarantee. Or the cycles of nature will never be interrupted to harm you. The cycles of nature, they will never be interrupted to harm you or to hurt you. So when he says seed time and harvest time will always come. Seed time and harvest, it doesn't say time. It says seed time and harvest will come because harvest is unlimited. You didn't hear me. It only says seed time and harvest. It doesn't say time. Harvest time. Because for you, every day is a day of harvest. Amen. You can sow any time and harvest any time. There is no time limit to your days of harvest. It says, uh, Genesis 8, 22, that seed time and harvest shall not cease. It means harvest is timeless. But it also says cold and winter. Cold and heat. Uh, uh, winter and summer. Day and night shall not cease. To make sure that you eat. To make sure that you have at the energy to, to make the wealth that you desire. So seed time and harvest is guaranteed. And he also says in his word that he is the one that gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. That means he has also made a commitment to provide for you the seed and the bread to eat. What a faithful father we have. Number three, all his blessings that we have been promised are not automatic. They are not automatic, but they must be pre preceded by adherence of his requirements. That it is not automatic that you will become wealthy. It is not automatic that you will become rich. But there are kingdom requirements for you to meet, for God to release what he has for you. Because we, we, the Bible says that hide your, lay your treasures in heaven where there is no moth and there are no locusts and there is no harm that can locate the world. The world that we are talking about is what is hidden in God. And God only gives when there are some requirements, minimum requirements, uh, that God requires from us. And as you meet them, heaven will provide for you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and verse 20. Matthew 6, 19, 20. That lay up your treasures in heaven. Lay up your treasures in heaven where there is no moth, where there are no caterpillars, where there are no canker worms. In heaven there is no. Lay up not yourselves treasures upon the earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. Where thieves uh, do not... Uh, where these do not break through or steal. It means that what we are talking about is not what is locally available. Ambia jirani yako, mi natafuta mali ya maju. Mwambia natafuta, nangoje ya mali ya maju. Mi singoje iloko. I'm not dealing with the local things. We are talking about the treasures that are in heaven. Where no moth no rust doth corrupt. And where these do not break through, no steal. It's the same that says in Isaiah 45 that I would see that I will give you treasures that are hidden in darkness. They are treasures that are hidden in darkness, but they will not be given automatically. They are conditions that you must meet. And we'll talk about those conditions very soon. I want to also tell you that the will of God is not for you to be rich, but to be very wealthy. There is a difference between being rich and being wealthy. And I found like three differences. We can say you are rich because of the car we can see. The refrigerator we can see. Like when they are judging middle class and upper class, they look at generally what you have in your household, the basic requirements of life. How do you travel? What do you wear? Do you wear designer clothes? Or do you wear whatever comes your way? That is how they rate us. But wealth is your worth. Hey. Wealth is your worth. Right now we can look at you and say, she's very rich. Based on what? How, what we can see. We can see the hair. We know that is not even human hair. It is angel hair. <laughs> when we look at the hair, we know that hair is 70,000. When we look at the dress, we say this is a Gucci bag. And that is a, is a, uh, is a Valentino <laughs> belt. Satan is a liar. And the buttons are, are from Louis Vuitton. And when we look at you, we can say this one is very rich. Based on what we see. But do you know that sometimes wealthy people don't dress richly? Tell your neighbor, never judge a book by its father, by its cover. I am very wealthy. By fire, by force. The wealthy people are the ones who, call, who control politics of nations, not the rich. Mm -mm. Riches are toys. They are toys. Like if you have a Lois, Lois, 
you know, you have a nice a bent bluntly and you know you are bright. That is riches. Real people don't speak. Wealthy people are so busy, you they can they don't have life for flashy flashiness. Huh? I why am I not hearing? Okay, these are wealthy people. I can tell by the way you are you're saying yes. I can tell you you are very wealthy people. And that is the will of God for all of us. They control the politics of the nations. You will never see them on the campaign trail. Never. But because if somebody owns the quarter of Kenya, you can't make a decision without them. It's true. If somebody has invested in your company 60% and you are 40% and you are more popular, your popularity is irrelevant. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we communicating? God wants you to be in control. The world that God gives is so that he may remove you from servanthood to make you a decision maker. Therefore, world that is given by God gives you dominion. I can't hear your amen. May you receive your dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to give us what are some of the requirements because of time. I know I have only 10 minutes. Uh, because of time and then in the second service we'll continue. What are the requirements that God has for us so that he can give us this wealth? Number one, you must understand it is a promise that you must claim. It is a promise that you must claim. Remember Caleb at the age of 80, he said, give me this mountain for you promise that you will give it to me when I was 40 years old and I am still as strong as I was when I was 40 years ago when I went to survey the land. So if you do not know what is expected of you and what is available for you, you will remain poor, be the one to beg uh, and, and eat the crumbs from the table while heaven is calling you to the main room. I pray that you will lessen with God with your promises. That the promises of God concerning your wealth will be on your fingertips. That you are not guessing that whether it is the will of God for you to be wealthy. It is the will of God. Tell your neighbor, it is the will of God for you to be very wealthy. We have been abducted to the family of our father Abraham. Look at Abraham. He was very wealthy until kings were afraid of him. Joseph became very wealthy in Egypt that even the king had no, had, no, had no otherwise but to set apart the land of Goshen to his family. And they multiplied and they never suffered famine. When you understand who you are, you know it is a promise and you cannot rest until wealth is in your house. Oh, you got too comfortable too soon. This word of God is a treasure. If you lessen with God with his promises concerning my word, ask him me, command him me. Anytime God has given a promise, he expects you to follow it and he shall fulfill it. That is why every day of your life walk say I can never be poor because the Bible says that he shall multiply me. But when you are still intimidated you will not be saying that I can never. Amen. Just a minute. I think the fan is blowing off. It means that wealth is being distributed in this altar. Somebody shout the loudest amen. So if you not, do not know it's the will of God for you to be wealthy, you will be saying, Jehovah, as long as I make it to heaven and sleep in the bosom of Abraham, I'm okay. Like Lazarus. You remember the woman that came to Jesus and was told that I cannot heal your child. He was, she was told that I cannot give the bread of children to dogs. Jesus called her dog. And she said, but even dogs eat from the crumbs of their master. Some of us, the reason why we have not moved from riches to wealth is because we are comfortable at our level. But I pray that this message will unsettle you. That by the time they are making decisions in your estate, they must consult you. Hey, I can't hear your amen. amen. Number two, the wealth that God gives is conditional. The world that God gives you is conditional. You must fulfill your part that God may fulfill his. It's conditional. And there are like five conditions that are there. Number one, the condition of honor. Malachi 3, 10, honor the Lord with your God, with the, with the, the fruit, with whatever, with the 10% of your income, so that God may open the floodgates of heaven. Honor your father and mother, Exodus chapter 20, the 10 commandments, that you may live long in the land that I will give you. Hey. It is the condition of honor. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. It is a principle of honor. For you to, if you want to enjoy wealth that is unconditional, then you cannot get it in the kingdom because the kingdom is a kingdom of principles. 
If you want to get wealth quick without any price, then you will get it from the devil. And you know he's a thief. John 10, 10. He's, he steals, he kills, and he destroys. He will not steal from us in Jesus' name. So one of the requirements for you to get wealth that is a condition is honor. If you honor the Lord your God, he will open the floodgates. If you refuse to honor him, he will close. And you know you can't force him. Tell anybody you cannot break the heavenly bank. No matter how wicked you are. Even your tears cannot open that bank. He says, and that is a covenant he made with Moses. He told him, he told with the children of Israel, he told them, go and tell them that the 10% belongs to God. And the New Testament did not come to cancel the Old Testament. It only came to strengthen it. So those who want to argue that we are not living by the Old Covenant, you stop tithing and the windows will close. He's the same today, yesterday and forevermore. If his own children is telling them that you have to honor your father, honor the prophet, honor God with your tithes. And honor is, is not just saying, honor is not a posture. Honor is what you do. We know that you honor God if you pay your tithes. Or is this in Kina ni Makerele? And I know I'm, I'm, I'm unsettling some people because they feel like when you give tithe, you are helping anybody. You are helping yourself. Hey. You are helping yourself. Because the only way we know you honor your parents, it is when you care about how they live. You cannot be living well in the city and your parents are, are wearing rags and you say, I honor my father. You are a liar. The only way you know that you honor a man of God is not by what you say, it is what you do. Like if I say, write down your, your, your prayer, your, your testimonies, write them. Take that word seriously, come. It is a principle of honor. Now, unajua yeshima hainunuli yangui. Hey, how we communicate? You come by honor because honor is given. And honor is given in relation to value. The value you place on God will determine whether you give 10 or 20 or 50%. There are people in this life who are giving 50. They stopped counting 10. Because they know God has given me too much. I cannot count for him. Ten was the minimum because of the wickedness of men. But in the new covenant, give yourself as a living sacrifice. When you give your all, it means everything that belongs to you belongs to God. The other condition is service. Matthew 6.33 That Seek you first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And is it Exodus 20 that says, And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless your bread. And he shall bless your water. Now these shall be scattered their young. None of them shall be sick. Get me that scripture. It says, it's a promise. When you serve God, it is the only way. Because no wealth will be given unless you are a servant. Tell you the best, uh, wealth is a blessing to servants. Yes, because if you are given a wealth and you are a king and you are bossy, it will never reach the people it was intended to reach. That is why God will multiply your company because, uh, because of you, many will eat from your table. Yeah. I can't hear your amen. That's why the Bible says, whoever helps a poor man, it is God he gives credit. God will make sure he will pay you back. A wealthy man does not withhold food from the poor. They give to the poor. That is why very soon we are beginning a feeding campaign here. We will be feeding the homeless and those people who will sit on the seats. I am looking forward to having that mega kitchen where we give a lunchbox of dinner. They don't have to eat from the garbage can when we are here. I don't know whether you are hearing me. I tried it and the systems did not allow, but now I know how to do it. <laughs> I now know how to do it by the grace of God. Tell your neighbor, you will never be a beggar. Stand up on your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's start begin to begin to thank God for the privileges he has given us. For allowing us to serve him. Because of those who are watching us live on the broadcast, I may not continue. But of course, you, can, you are invited at Casino Cinema for the broadcast. Father, I commit my viewer into your hands. Wherever they are watching us from, from the CTN TV, from our Facebook handles, we pray that your blessing will be upon them in the name of Jesus. That your glory and your anointing will cover them. Them that do not know you as Savior and Lord, I pray that 
that you will save them and redeem them. We bless our viewers and everybody watching us on TV. Those that are sick, I release your healing. Those that are in need of a job, I release their miracle. Those that are in need of enlargement, I release your enlargement. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and celebrate our online and CTN viewers. I still can hear your celebration. So God bless you. God do you good.